Got to show you the... Oh, wait. Missy? Yes. <laughs> you having fun there? Oh, I'm going to put it on upside down. Haha. <laughs> Good one. In. Please don't go on. I'm going to... Oh! No, 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 no. Was that comfy? Um, and you need changing the mat. Hi, crafty people. Today I'm here to show you how I made a cover for the changing mat in Ruben's bedroom here. Ruben is a four and a half month old and this here in his room is where we have his changing pad. It was actually a really simple project to make a cover for this changing pad so I hope this video helps you to be able to make one too. If this is your first time on my channel then welcome. My name's Marie and this channel is all about motivating mums to make and mend. This is the changing pad cover that I will be showing you how to make in this tutorial. I've made it out of this flannelette with bees on it. It's elasticated on the back to make it easy to put in and I'll show you how you can pattern out the sides to fit the changing pad that you have as well. We're going to hop straight into the tutorial showing you how I made this changing pad cover. So let's get making. Mama makes a changing pad cover. So I've got Reuben here and I've just put him in his bed so that I can show you the fitted sheet that's on his cot at the moment. We actually bought this fitted sheet as a cot set and so it came with a flat sheet here which has never been used. And we bought this when I was pregnant with Elijah and he's now five. So that's what I'm going to be chopping up to make our change table cover from. And that way it will match the decor in the room because it already matches the cot sheet, obviously. It is slightly newer looking, obviously, than the uh, fitted sheet that we've had four children use. But I think it will be a good use of the fabric so that it's actually getting used instead of just being a sheet that does nothing. And it might as well be used as an extra change table cover because it's useful to have extras. <laughs> you having fun there? This here is our changing mat and the first thing I'm going to do is to pattern out what this shaped piece is because it's the most intricate sort of piece. So I'm going to measure all of these sides, draw them out on a piece of paper and then extend this bottom part down three inches or eight centimeters so that the cover will be uh, tight in the bottom here, a bit like a fitted sheet and we'll elasticate it so that it stays on. So first let's draw out this pattern piece. So I've measured eight centimeters up from the bottom of the paper, which is about three inches. And now I'm going to see the width of my change table cover, which is 39 centimeters. So I'm going to put the measurement of that here. So 39 centimeters is the width. And then we have a height of eight centimeters. So we're going to go up eight centimeters from that. So next I'm going to measure across this top section here to that point where it goes down, which is say five and a half centimeters. So we'll plot that on there. So now we're measuring this straight edge on the flat part. Um, so let's see, we've got it's two and a half centimeters up from the bottom and 19 centimeters along. So I'm going to find the middle of my changing pad. So this is the middle and then we're going to measure two and a half centimeters up which is where the next flat part is where the baby actually lies um, but that line only needs to be 19 centimeters long so we're going to use our middle dot to make 19 centimeters so we'll do nine and a half either side so now we just join these edges to make that angle so this is the pattern piece we'll be using to make the sides of it we also just need to add a seam allowance around each of the edges. So I'm going to draw that seam allowance in now and then cut out this pattern piece. So there it is, there's our pattern piece. Put a fit on the end here like this and then this extra that we left is going to go underneath just like a fitted sheet and then we'll elasticate that so it stays on the bottom. So that is our main pattern piece. And then the last pattern piece we need is just a piece to go from this underside all the way around the front and onto this side and it just is going to be a really big rectangle so to measure that one out I'm going to find out the length of my changing pad and then add some seam allowance and then I'm going to find out the distance from here all the way around to here adding that same eight centimeters as we did on the other side here so that they're all even and I'm going to measure that one out and just write down the size rectangle that I need to cut with all our measurements done, we're now ready to cut our pieces out of our fabric. So I need two of this shape and I need one rectangle, which is going to be 80 centimeters by 75 centimeters. I'm going to cut them out of my fabric and then we'll start sewing it all together. Hi 
I'm making my change table cover out of flannelette and I do recommend that fabric if you are a beginner. A lot of change table covers are made out of minky fabric but if you're a beginner I wouldn't recommend minky fabric, it's a bit slippery to sew with and stretchy. And same as PUL, that's a waterproof wipeable fabric, you could make a change table cover out of that. But again if you're a beginner I wouldn't recommend that either, there's a bit of a learning curve with sewing with PUL. Flannelette is a great way to go, there are lots of different options of colours and patterns and designs and it's a really simple fabric to sew with so I would recommend that. So I'm just cutting off the hem of the sheet which if you're just using normal fabric that won't be an issue for you but I don't want the hem to get in the way of the elastic that I'm putting in so I'm just going to chop off the existing hem so I'm able to hem it myself. So I have all my pattern pieces cut and the next thing I'm going to do is attach my rectangle to the edge of all the way around here on this shape. I'm going to pin it together and I'll start here and hopefully as I'm pinning it all along my measurements will be correct and we'll get to this edge and they'll nicely meet and it'll look great. Then we're going to sew it together using just a standard straight stitch because this is not a stretchy fabric and then I'll be doing the same thing on the other side. So with right sides together I've started by pinning down this side of my shape and along these two sides here and now I'm going to swap to this other side here and do the same thing and then that way I can hopefully meet it up in the middle and uh, if there are any bits where I need to stretch it or bunch it uh, I can just kind of fudge that in the middle a bit but it'll be easier to make it work if I start from the edges. It fit the whole way around. So now we're going to sew along this edge to attach our rectangle to this edge and then we'll do the exact same on the other side. Help. Help? What do you need help with? Honey? Help. You wanna Mommy, help? Oh, you wanna help me? Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. You wanna be my helper? Yeah. Okay. Can you you help hold here? Okay. Not this end, just this end. Ready? I want it. As you're sewing around each of the edges, make sure that you put the needle in to pivot your fabric around each of the corners and also make sure that you're flattening out any of the fabric underneath so that it's not bunched up underneath what you're sewing. Don't worry, I'm taking my foot right off the presser foot when her fingers are close. Now, can you press the button, this one? Good job. Is it going back, Mom? Yes, it was. And then we press this button. Good job! And then we're going to turn it off. Ready? There you go. Thanks, Elfa. Now that's a sharp needle. I'm going to move it back here. Let's see how you did, Ali. How was your first sewing experience? Look at that. You did it. Can you wave to the camera? Hi. Bye bye. <laughs> so we have finished sewing along that edge here, like this. And as you can tell, the corners are a little bit bulky because we haven't snipped them. So on the <laughs> wrong side of the fabric here, we're going to snip off the corners where the fabric is. Oh, cheese. Oh, cheese? I thought you said horsey. Hi. Did you say cheese? Yeah. Okay. We're going to snip off these corners here. So, I need fabric scissors. Fabric. And I need to be able to see what I'm doing. Make sure you don't cut your stitching or your children. And then with these parts here where the angle goes in, we're going to cut a notch out of that bit as well so that, so that, that bit sits flat as well. Bit of a notch out of there, not very neat, but uh, you work with what you've uh, got. So this will be one of the edges of the change table cover. We're going to do the exact same thing on the other edge, and that will be the whole sort of structure of it, ready for us to elasticate. Are you done helping me though? Uh, no. You want to do more helping? Okay. Oh. All done? Thank yeah. you. So cool. Thank you. So I'm going to put them right sides together and pin down one edge and then pin down the other edge, pin a center point and then kind of spread the fabric out between those two points. Now this second side is ready for us to do the same thing and to straight stitch all the way around it. I 
I've completed both edges now. I've sewn it onto the side of the rectangle and same on the other side here. And I've clipped the corners of the inside of the shape just so that it sits nicely. I'm going to test it on my change table cover and then we're going to hem the edges and put in some elastic. So to hem it, we're going to fold it over twice so that there's no raw edge exposed and then we're going to sew along this edge here leaving enough space so that I can then thread the elastic through at the end. I'm going to go the entire way around up uh, around. I'm going to go the entire way around the change mat leaving a little gap so that I can then thread the elastic through that casing. You should probably measure out how big you want the casing to be but I'm just kind of eyeballing it and because it's elasticated it shouldn't matter too much because the elastic will draw it all in and it won't matter if it's a bit off but you might want to uh, measure the distance to make sure it's even up to you. I finished sewing my casing the entire way around my changing mat cover. The next thing I'm going to do is to thread my elastic through the casing. So to do that, I'm going to put the end of my elastic on a safety pin and push it all the way through the casing until it comes out the other side. Then I'm going to pull it tight enough so that the whole thing is nice and secure on the bottom. So I'll do that while it's on my changing pad to see how tight to make it. Then I'll cut the end off the elastic and I'll sew the two ends of the elastic together using a zigzag stitch to keep it secure. Then I'll push the ends into the casing and sew the casing closed with a straight stitch and that'll be all. It's all ready to use. So let's have a look at how it looks on the changing mat. So there you have it. That is how I made this changing pad cover. If you found this video helpful, I'd love for you to press like down below and feel free to subscribe if you want to see some of my other projects that I have coming up. If you make a changing pad cover like I did, then I'd love to see a photo of it. So tag me in your Instagram photos at mymummakes.marie. Don't forget to follow me over there as well so that you can see a bit of what I'm up to during the week. And until next time, go get creative and we'll see you later.